everyone and welcome back to another electrifying episode of the Silicon Dreams on 1550 AM. I'm your host Charlene from Orbis 86 and today we have joining us Tanisha Kohli, the esteemed branding, PR and content expert at ZKX Protocol. Welcome Tanisha, it's great to have you on our podcast today. Thank you for having me. That's a brilliant introduction. <laughs> I think <laughs> thank you for thank you for introducing me. Absolutely. So, you know, with over six years of strategic prowess, Tanisha has carved a niche for herself, particularly within the dynamic tech industry, startups and Web3, which is commendable. And I think on that note, we can start, uh, you know, into her journey with, you know, before we get into the nitty gritty of DeFi. So, Tanisha, can you share with our listeners how you found your way into the fascinating world of Web3? Yeah. Um, I think firstly, thank you, Shalin. I mean, absolutely happy to be here. I have hosted so many people myself, given my background, but it's the first time I'm on the other side, so I'm sort of excited how it goes. Um, and uh, yeah, just happy to be here and, you know, let's let's kick it off. I think your first question is, how did I get into Web3? I mean, now looking down at my career, it's sort of somewhere in the middle, right, where you're not a junior, but you're not really like somewhere in the middle. I guess so. I think if I look down, look at my six years now, I sort of I, I, you can't really plan that. Um, so I think how I started into Web three is very interesting because I was a public relations consultant, um, and I actually started my career with tech startups, B two B business, fintech. So I was sort of always in that space, and I think when DeFi summer really happened, I think you could see, you know, and I mean even you would all look. Uh, you could see a lot of influence that we were seeing, like we were talking about GameStop, uh, we were talking about, you know, how how do they do that? And I think I, we was, we started seeing a lot of business come from Web3, right? Um, and that's how I got into it because I was in that space literally. And um, I would see, you know, a lot of NFT marketplaces coming up immediately overnight in some, in some cases. Yeah. And, you know, I worked on them. I worked on some... Uh, and then I found some more NFT projects. I was like, and NFTs, you know, even still now, I mean, you talk to people and, you know, out of uh, seven out of 10 times, people say, we just started with NFTs. And that's the truth because it's so easy. It was so interesting. Um, and that's how I got into Web3. And then I finally, because I worked in FinTech and tech, I was looking for something more my style. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got into DeFi and found ZKX. So, yeah, I mean, it's been very interesting because I started my journey with an NFT project, we got into DeFi um, and have been with the project actually since inception, which is very lucky. It doesn't really happen. So you have like zero to one growth uh, and I've been with them for two, two and a half years. So it's it's been a great, great time, I would say. That's great. I mean, that is definitely an interesting journey. And, you know, usually when you talk to people who have gotten into Web3, they are usually there for the tech side of things, but it's nice to finally, mm-hmm. you know, talk to somebody who's on the PR and marketing, because I think that's something we do lack in Web3 and it is coming up right now. So, you know, speaking yeah. about, um, yeah, PR and marketing in the decentralized finance space, it's a whole new ball game you know, compared to traditional industries. So, or maybe, maybe yeah. something similar at the end of the day, but, you know, what are these, what are the unique uh, challenges that professionals like yourself, you know, face here with, with regards to PR and marketing? The question would just be like two years of my career, I guess. But um, the thing is, when I got from PR, right, and when I was given this opportunity that I evolved from PR into marketing and growth and content strategies, Mm-hmm. What I realized was that the difference, I would say the challenge is in the difference and why Web3 is so unique to some people or why it's attractive to some people is that, you know, let's say you launch a beauty product, right? right. Uh, in this time and age, uh, you say, okay, this is how I look. These are my color. This is my audience. Uh, okay, what else do I need? I need to describe myself. Okay, done. Um, do I need um, PR push? Okay, done. You can, you know, can do a release. Um, then you do an interview right um from from a growth perspective like let's say you look at a brand from a 360 perspective right and you say hey i could do instagram ads right beauty is now so much on instagram you can influence people uh you can do facebook ads right if you really want to go rural and you can do google ads you know we know let's say if you take any brand in particular let's not take names but the idea that i'm trying to create there's a picture to how in your mind as well when i say okay let's create a brand in web2 
there's a picture that keeps forming in your mind oh i can do this oh i can do that and there's because traditional finance I means traditional pr marketing whatever has been for so long there are so many experts there's schools for that right uh, mica whatever right you have a blueprint yes you you can you can be anywhere in that blueprint you can follow a niche like what i did with pr or you could be a growth person people dedicate their careers to running facebook ads you know what i mean so i think there is a complete blueprint and when i came to web3 there's something called dyor this is do your own research right yes. and i'm like what the hell is that but it literally means that you have to figure out what do you want to do and the challenge with web3 and the what's attractive is that there are no blueprints there is no brand guideline right you can be as edgy as you want you can be as uh, stupid i mean you see some of the nft projects and they're so so unique um and, and and that's what i think the challenge in you know i would position it that that there is no blueprint you have to really figure out what type of communication works for you right um and i think the second thing is to not see a brand and um, and how to position the brand just from a perspective of a pr mm-hmm. or from growth i think it has to be a holistic approach of you know okay who we are how do we communicate ourselves um does it match our vibe on twitter do people resonate with this type of tonality right do i if i do pr would it resonate with people you know because in web3 there's also like an attitude of a brand mm-hmm. right you cannot just do everything right um so you have to see what works for you what's who your audience is how do you reach out to them because there's no attribution in web3 i mean we're trying to create one but there isn't any and this is sort of like a ball play like a good time for marketers to enter this space like you said there looks like less of us um and um, that's where you kind of put like you know your storytelling comes into play right? absolutely because there's so many projects right let's say you are in defi you are lending borrowing NFT marketplace, the Ponzi nomics, or the fundamentals of the fin- finance, how it works is insane. Mm-hmm. So, how do you? Who is your competitor? Who is your peer? How do you talk to people? Who is your audience? It's a completely different um, ball game. But again, do your own research. You have to find out what works for your brand. And the more beautiful part about Web three is because it's so nascent, and there's like some marketers and some people who are doing everything. Right? You could have a BD person also do growth. It happens, and we've seen it. um you can always reach out to people which yeah. i have done in two years that i have worked in a sort of now from my uh, way of how i would like to communicate the specific brand absolutely that that is um, you know correct and i think also when you talk about you know pushing out a press release or you know just you know uh, kind of telling people about trying to build that brand i think education is also important because i think in a country like india especially yeah it, before just you know because when you say beauty you're trying to build that brand you're saying oh this is why we are good but here you have to explain uh, the basics of who you are yes <laughs> exactly and why <laughs> you know so that comes into yeah. it, definitely and um, okay now i think we can get to a little more detail so listeners get ready to learn about zkx uh, that takes trading to the yeah. next level yeah by incorporating gamification into its exchange platform so tanisha if you could shed some light on how this you know benefits traders and you know a little more about uh, zkx yeah i mean i would like to simplify it for everyone like let's say and that comes with the level of how much you know in defi at one point yeah. um uh, everybody talks about gamification decentralization permissionless but you know for like a user who wants to trade you like what the, what the hell is going on so think of zkx um as an exchange right it's a protocol mm-hmm. um uh, and think that zkx has two products at the moment one is called og trade and the other is called pro trade uh they both are exchanges one they both are decentralized exchanges what that means is they are on a ledger blockchain which is l2 called starknet uh what that means is that there is transparency everything is done on the blockchain now what we get and what we are doing at zkx is that we have built two types of exchanges nobody really does that if you really look into the competitor landscape i've never really seen to a protocol do to exchange and the reason is what we understood was um that one solution doesn't need all needs right um so what we created was we created an advanced terminal right which is for advanced traders um and who want to kind of use strategy in a different way right um and then we created something called og trade which was more fun more accessible see the vision ultimately is to make our product more accessible mm-hmm. right how do we do that so the inside is one solution doesn't fit all 
Secondly is, okay, not all types of traders are the same type of traders, right? So an advanced trader is a different trader. And then like if, you, and with OG trade, what we did was we came up with this insane level of gamification, which was we are doing, going to do 30 minute of competitions, right? Um, every time, so it's an perp exchange, right? The thing which people sort of miss is that perps are serious business. You know, they're, they're serious trading business. But how do you make it accessible? Like how can Charlene and Tanisha be become perp traders? And that's when you quite kind of think, okay, we have to think of the UI. We have to think what's interesting to them. How do people stick on it? Uh, how easy it is to trade, right? Uh, what do I do? Do I have to study what I'm trading? Uh, because not many of us really have that type of time and right? But we still want to make money at the end of the day. So you have with OG, you have a 30 minute competition. You have, um, Sorry, I think you are my grandma. Yeah, you have thirty minutes of competition. You can just trade by up and down. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that, right? And uh, you and the fun part of it is like, how do you make it more interesting for people to keep coming back? So you have a leaderboard. You have three leaderboards, and I won't get into too much of it, but they they're called profit, volume, loss. And mm -hmm. even if you are losing, even if you are lost the most, you're on top of the leaderboard, and you get access to some tokens. So that's where the stickiness and the gamification sort of comes into play. Even with pro, you have 24 hour, hour competition. So what we have done is we've taken two products, catered to different types of traders, created gamification in a way that brings people back with a reward mechanism and makes it easy that people like you and I, maybe my colleagues, maybe some other people, they can have a taste of what perp trading is about. Right. That thank you for you know kind of simplifying that and definitely accessibility is crucial for traders of all sizes. So you know I'm glad that yeah. um, ZKX has you know taken these measures to kind of make sure that there's everyone has uh, access to you know trading. And um, with that being said, building and nurturing a brand you know in this landscape of DeFi is definitely nothing easy, right? So. What kind of strategies have you discovered to be most effective in this environment? First thing is we did find like what works for us. But the second is caution. Not caution in the sense, but the thing is, if you figure out a strategy that works for you, it could be so dynamic that next year it totally wouldn't work. Yeah. Because the market has changed so much, right? So from a brand perspective, I think it's uh, what works and what has worked for us is um, we were clear on who we are, right? Our vision has always been that we want to create a product accessible to all. Mm -hmm. Our target audience has always been emerging markets because this is our assumption and our analysis that trading volume is in Asia. It's not in Europe. It's not in the US, right? So you sort of pivot. You know, it's you sort of pivot in your communication, how you're communicating to the users you think you need to target, right? The third thing is content. I cannot stress this enough. And that's what I realized and learned in Web3 is that content is like really important. The content should reflect who you are, your audience, the tonality, like I said before. Um, it builds trust. It's as simple as that, right? It builds trust. Um, and your Twitter is the main source. So you have to be on top of trends. You have to be on top of what's going on, mm -hmm. right? And then let's get into a little bit of 360. How do you like really build a brand? And then, you know, it has to reflect to your community. Mm -hmm. And this is where I feel, uh, you know, Web2 is sort of catching up to Web3 is because this element, which is the small element, but such a huge part of a brand community building, right? Yes. Um, if you have a community, let's say I take out a campaign, they can either like it, dislike it, share suggestions, but that feedback loop, uh, is so brilliant and great. And, you know, they're also rewarded for their contribution. It's sort of different kind of workplace as well, right? And from a DAO perspective. So it kind of leads to, you know, Twitter content, Discord. Um, what we have done is we know our uh, target audience is emerging markets. So we have targeted uh, media, KOLs, content in emerging markets. So people get to experience and learn about ZKX in their own native language. It's a very big thing. Uh, you know, and it makes simple, big, simple thing, beautiful to execute, uh, but huge in impact, you know, um, and then sort of tailor made it from a PR perspective, a marketing perspective, there are campaigns, partnerships, collaboration, even competitors collaborate. So I think there are no rules in brand building in ZK. So fundamental remains the same. You have to be very clear on who you are. 
communication, everything. Uh, but there's so much to explore, I feel. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, you know, community building and trusting, that's what stood out for me. And that's what stands out for the Web3. Uh, I mean, people building in Web3, definitely, because mm. I think that is the core and the base of, you know, how projects need to and have to come up uh, in this space, definitely, right? Um, now with yeah. that, I think, um, yes. And, um, you know, there are a lot of misconceptions, you know, around uh, Web3, crypto, decentralized exchanges, but, you know, focusing on decentralized exchanges, how does, you know, ZKX address or overcome these misconceptions or at a personal level, what do you think is something you can do to, you know, uh, help people, you know, take off that negative connotation with uh, revolves around DeFi or Web3 in general? Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I think I look at this from a perspective, let's say I'm a user, right? I go to Binance. And I'm trying to figure and explore the platform, right? Let's let's take it from an angle of like how what you really do on that one. And then you're like, hey, I can I can like buy some meme coins. I can you know I can do futures. I can do some leverage here and there, right? Um, and then you try to explore and understand the crypto space, right? Now whatever could be the lever or attract what attracted you in the first place could be many things. It depends on the narrative. It changes so quick, right? Now. The thing is, when you get immersed in it, you sort of start realizing, okay, what am I doing, right? What am I contributing to? Can it be better, right? Um, is there a security challenge here? Uh, what happens is people read about hacks, they read about FTX, um, and it, it's like the news cycle, right? You read the headlines, but you really don't know how it works, how it impacts you, right? So some of the misconceptions, I think, rather than misconceptions, they're apprehension, and rightly so for some people, right? um you go on the you go to binance you sort of log in from your social media email id whatever right the experience is so web too um and you're in it you're trading whatever now let's see a situation comes where binance africa is shut on like ftx you know like then you don't then you realize oh i don't have really control of my funds um then you're like okay maybe binance is down then you're like oh this is not on the blockchain a lot of people don't even realize that's not on the blockchain right then you're like oh it's on aws or whatever right yeah. so i think the uh, the apprehensions are on first the level of understanding right mm -hmm. uh the, what you're doing i yeah. think and i think the apprehension that we have seen is that now first thing you get used to being becoming a centralized exchange user from a central exchange user to a to a DEX user, the journey is a little bit of a learning curve, I would say, okay. where you you want to, where the apprehensions are, hey, I don't want to be in a position where I lose my funds. I don't want to be in a position where somebody is controlling my data. You know, that was the whole thing of Web3, why it came to place. You are not being targeted. You yeah. and I are talking and maybe we are getting targeted on Instagram, but it is definitely not going to happen in DeFi, yeah. right? Um, uh, if anything goes down with the platform, you control of your funds right you and the and the extension of it is you have a say in how the platform moves in a DAO in the space right if you take a uniswap you want to take this partner you don't want to take this partner whatever it is you have a say in how you build that brand and that's so beautiful i feel yeah. so i think the apprehension that we have tried to figure out and mostly uh our, you know um self-custodial account we have our own account right uh self-custodial for somebody it's very simple you are in control of your account you're in control of your money, you access it. If you don't remember it, you lose it, or uh, you have a seed phrase, right? Now we are coming up with something called account abstraction. And account abstraction is simply like, um, it doesn't matter your wallet address, right? You have a 12 key uh, seed phrase, right? And people forget that password, right? And what you can do is you can log in from your social media, right? So we are trying to abstract the information at the back end so we keep you secure, but your experience is still web too. So I think uh, these are the apprehension. The other apprehension is, of course, you know, gas fee. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to trade, uh, you don't want to trade, like spend like $100, $200 just to make a trade. I mean, realistically, right? So what do you do? So we are built on um, ZK Rollup uh, chain called StockNet, right? Uh, where the way they're kind of aggregating the data and optimizing it, optimizing the block space, it's cheaper, 
right? So we have made sure that people who come to the ecosystem, uh, the experience is great, they're familiar with the UI, and also it's not as expensive for them to trade on blockchain, right? Because I mean, to come to think of it, if a trader wants to make money, mm -hmm. does it matter to him on the ethos of blockchain? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, and that's why you need to be as decentralized because you are still in control of who you're doing. You're not targeted, you don't have a persona, right? Um, and I think these are some of the things that we have tried to sort of target the UI, right? Uh, the security of it and how efficient and cheap it is for a user. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I think seamless onboarding in the first place is really important, especially when, you know, because people are used to Web2 and there's, there's nothing you can do about it because it's been a long, uh, been around for a longer time. Uh, Web3 is relatively new, but, uh, you know, saying that I know that there's risk involved. Everybody knows that there's risk involved. It's just that, you know, um, with Web2 initially, that was the same thing, right? People uh, saw social media, saw the internet as a... Uh, as a threat but now everyone's adapted to it and i think that's just how web3 will work and it's great that you guys are trying to you know back web3 with web2 for seamless onboarding so that's great and um yeah like i said education and you know doing your own res research at the end of the day is very important for all our startups and entrepreneurs out there entering or established in web3 uh, this is our last question so what's one solid piece of advice you would offer to them and listeners, you might want to pay attention to this one and be ready to note down. So. I think uh, for anybody entering the space, right, or uh, and no one wants to probably create a meme coin, you can, you know. I mean, then the possible design is to be an entrepreneur in Web3. I think uh, what you can follow is sort of like a rule uh, that, you know, to deliver who you are, which is to have a very clear vision communicate that vision, um, talk about what you're building and how it works, right? It's very important. Then followed by roadmap because people want to see continuity. There are a lot of projects which come in and out, right? So what is the long-term vision, right? Who are the team members that are working on this project, right? Break that ice. Um, and I think these are four or five things that even as entrepreneurs, you should discuss about, you know, how do you want to position yourself, all these things, right? Mm -hmm. And a clear vision is something that will help you. I think that's one um, advice uh, learning that I've had myself. The second is that, you know, utilize the community aspect of F3. You have a lot of people to help you out. If let's say you need a designer or you need help with content, right? The, you can create programs for people, right? The ambassador programs, contributor programs. There's a different way of working. So embrace and adapt to that, I would say, to an any entrepreneur. And the third is, you know, what do you know? Like, where do you get the alpha? Because I mean, let's you mostly are working remotely. So I think the alpha is inside events at yes. big events, yes. right? So I would say if you're a new um, entrepreneur and you want to talk about your product, reach out to people, hit up those side events. We know we our token is happening at the moment. There was a little bit of a flood situation in Dubai, which I know that really happens ever. But, you know, our team is also there. The idea is that the more people you talk, you sort of understand, are you really different? Is something already happening? Is it unique to this chain? Maybe you are building this on StackNet. Maybe you meet somebody who's building it on Polygon. You just don't know, right? So there's a lot. And, um, and so there's a lot of alpha communication and camaraderie that you need uh, as an entrepreneur to connect with people. And these side events of these big mega events are really, really important, right? Um, so one is networking, second is to be very clear on your positioning and value that you bring to people, mm -hmm. right? And I would say optimize uh, and build an open. That's the whole thing about Web3, right? Build an open. If you're still building, have a Twitter page, talk about what you're working on. Do you need help? Uh, you know, just put it out there. Be as transparent as you can and you'll see that people sort of pick it up. Yes. Right? That's, that's so absolutely I think those are the... Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, uh, those are the th three things just on top of my mind. There's so much that you can do. But I think um, one is no, nobody would ever refuse to tell you, you know, what you need to know. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of F3. Yeah. You, I, like you are into music. We could talk about music and NFTs, right? Or And you could reach out to somebody else. So the loop of what information is long, mm -hmm. open, um, and it's good to build those connections, I think. 
that's that's true yeah so of course you know what we've taken back from here is definitely have a vision uh talk about what you're building uh you know be transparent about it for listeners who didn't catch the first time this is for you uh you know have a roadmap um you know put out your team members and always utilize the community because i think that's like i said earlier also uh the beauty of web3 is the community that we have and definitely side events because that's what orbis 86 also does a lot we host a lot of irl events not for really profit but more to just bring the community together and you know help each other exactly absolutely so yeah definitely and um pick your usp and make sure that you're bringing value to people that is definitely what we're taking back uh from here today thank you Tanisha, for that and thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today your journey was you know, it's, it's been incredible and everything that you said today, I'm pretty sure the listeners have, uh, you know, taken back. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a very good experience, my first experience to be on the other side. And I absolutely love it. You've been a great host. And yeah, I mean, it's just good to, you know, discuss some things like you said, marketing, uh, still so new in Web3. Yeah. Um, so just good to put these conversations out there, I think. Absolutely. Yes, that's that's the whole idea. And obviously the first rule being to educate, you know, everybody and onboard people seamlessly mm-hmm. to Web3. And um, yeah, to our listeners, thank you for tuning in, guys. Remember, in the fast-paced world of Web3 and DeFi, adaptability and innovation are definitely key. So stay informed, stay engaged and keep dreaming, dreaming big. Bye.